Hello dear children. Today we are going to start the topic that is ratio and proportion. Children when I say ratio it is in the form of a fraction but we are writing it as a is to b. You can hear me speak what I say is a is to b. So representation of a ratio is in the form of a and a colon and b. When we write it in the form of a is to b the numerator part or the a part is known as the antecedent and the denominator that is b over here is known as the consequent children ratio does not have any unit that means whenever you are converting into a ratio they should not write any unit there why because when we are uh, representing in the form of a ratio that is actually when the units are same when we have both a and b in the same unit only then we can represent in the form of a ratio so the unit gets cancelled up and we are left with no unit when we are writing in the form of a ratio comparison of ratios children when we compare the ratios between uh, two different ratios which is greater which is smaller in that case we do it like we do in fractions and you know in fractions the you people have done it what we were doing is we were converting it into like fractions same way here in the ratio also you have to convert it into like fractions that is by making the denominator equal or equalizing the denominator for example if we see 6 is to 7 and 5 is to 6 So here the denominator is seven and six. We have equalized the denominator. That is, LCM of seven and six is forty-two. So after taking the LCM of seven and six is forty-two, and multiplying with the numerator to make it equal, what we did is thirty-six we got here and thirty-five we got in the numerator in the second case. So first ratio six is to seven has been converted into thirty-six upon forty-two. Second ratio five is to six is converted to thirty five upon forty two. Now, when we compare and check out, we have the denominator same. So only the numerator part we have to check. And by checking the numerator, you can see that thirty six is greater than thirty five. Therefore, six is to seven is greater as compared to five is to six. so when we represent in ratio or we write it in ratio we will write it that 6 is to 7 is greater than 5 is to 6 same way now we will learn what is compound ratio when we have two different ratios children a is to b and c is to d in order to represent it in the form of compound ratio what we are doing is we will multiply the antecedent of the first ratio with the antecedent of the second ratio that means the numerator of this with the numerator of this a and c a is to b and c is to d are two different ratios so in order to convert it into compound ratio a into c you can see the arrow direction and b into d antecedent into antecedent and the consequent into the consequent so for example let us see 2 is to 3 and 4 is to 7 then in order to convert it into compound ratio 2 multiplied with 4 2 into 4 is to 3 is to 7 that is 8 is to 21 this is how we convert in compound ratio next is continued ratio children continued ratio is when we have the second uh, that is consequent in the ratio same that is two different ratios are given to you if the ratio first quantity is a is to b and the last ratio is b is to c then the third quantities are a is to b is to c we can say they are in continued ratio why here you can see the consequent of the first ratio is b and the antecedent of the second ratio is also b so what we do is when we are writing it we can write it as a is to b is to c how in that form that is if a is to b is 4 is to 15 for example if a is to b is 4 is to 15 and b is to c is 5 is to 8 then a b and c are in continued ratio because the b 
term over here is same in both the cases. That is why we call it as continued ratio. Okay children, now let us start with exercise 1a. Exercise 1a first question says to express the following ratios in the form of simplest form. So when we are expressing it in simplest form means we have to reduce it. That means we are reducing this particular ratio. 105 upon 231. So when we reduce it we are getting it as 5 upon 11 or we can write it as 5 is to 11. In the second bit children it's 3 by 8 is to 9 by 16. So 3 by 8 is to 9 by 16 and after taking the LCM of the denominator or the consequent part we are getting it as 16 2 to the power 4 or 16 why we are doing it so that we can equate the uh, consequent uh, over here to make it a continuous uh, ratio which you have studied in continued ratio just now I told you that in continued ratio if this remains same that means we can write it in the form of a is to c 3 is upon 8 is to 9 upon 16 so making it uh, the base is 16 so we got it as 6 is to 9 9 ones are 9 and here 3 twos are 6 so we got it as 6 upon 9 6 upon 9 because 16 is something we have equated and then 2 upon 3 that is 2 is to 3 as the answer question number 2 express the ratio in the simplest form when we are expressing the ratio in the simplest form here children I have done the second bit for you it's 14 meter to 7 meter 35 centimeter first thing we have to do is we have to uh, equate it and we have to see that they are in a same unit to convert it into one single unit here already we have it in meter so converting or changing the second unit into meter uh, we are uh, converting this 35 centimeter that is you know 1 meter is 100 centimeter and uh, 35 centimeter will be 35 upon 100 and we already had 7 so 7 plus 35 upon 100 that is 7.35 uh, 7 plus 0 0.35 or we got it as 7.35 meter then uh, in the form of ratio that is 14 upon 7.35 now both the uh, consequent and the antecedent are in uh, same unit so when we convert it removing this decimal point we have multiplied it with 100 because there were two digits after the decimal point so after calculating we got it as 40 is to 21 so now let us start with question number 3 if you read question number 3 children it says uh, that a man earns rupees 90,000 in a year let me rub this part read the question given a man earns rupees 90,000 in a year so income earning means you can say the income so the income of a man is given to you as rupees 90,000 okay then expenditure or spent expenditure is given to you as rupees 75,600 children you know that expenditure means the amount spent so if you want to find out the savings savings of the man what will be the savings the income when we subtract the expenditure from the income we will get the saving of the person so that is rupees 90,000 was the income this is the income minus rupees 75,600 
so we got it as rupees fourteen thousand four hundred. We got the savings as rupees fourteen thousand four hundred. Starting with the first bit, the first bit says ratio of income is to expenditure. Ratio of income is to expenditure, children. That is, you know, income was ninety thousand. Upon expenditure is seventy-five thousand six hundred. Zero got cancelled. We have nine hundred upon seven five six. Then when we cancel it with three, three hundred. Three two the six five the fifteen and again two the six. Cancelling it with two, we get one five zero one two six. Again, seventy five. Here we got it as sixty three. Again, three two the six three five the fifteen three two the six and one. So after cancellation, we got it as twenty-five upon twenty-one. That is, twenty-five is to twenty-one is the ratio for the first bit. Same way, if we check the second bit, children, it is the ratio of savings is to income. Savings is to income. savings we have already found out so you don't have to calculate it again that is why we did it in the starting for your convenience it will be easy so you know the savings is 14400 upon 90000 again 00 got cancelled and we have 144 upon 900 then Cancelling it again. The three three hundred three Got it as four upon twenty-five. That is four is to twenty-five. So the ratio of saving is to income is four is to twenty-five. Children, we'll keep it till question number three, and you are going to try for the till question number five in your rough copy. Thank you, children. Take care.